Hey there nation, welcome to the show where we help you to play miniatures wargaming on a budget. It is I, Commander Chiefskate, and we are back with another edition of the Kill Team Chronicles. This is a series of Warhammer 40,000 Kill Team Battle Reports, and this one is the second one of our series. Uh, this one is a Break Their Will scenario that is fought between my two friends King Khalifa with the Git of Fenris, which is a Space Wolves Reaver Kill Team, versus my other friend, Brother Grim of Wapocalypse Now, which is an Orcs Kill Team. So I do apologize once again, ladies and gentlemen, it has been a while since we updated new videos on the channel. It's been about a month, uh, just had a, been like a real crazy month going on for my channel as well as for me personally, a lot of stuff going on with my job and my personal life, so I just really haven't had the time to invite my friends over to, you know, play war games and then take photos of their progress as we go through our campaign. So I do apologize for the lateness of videos, I know it's been about a month since I've uploaded my last video and I do apologize for that. However, things have pretty much stabilized for the most part, so I should be able to release videos now on the regular for you guys. So once again, I do apologize for the lateness of the videos. But um, with that being said though, let's go and talk about my two friends. My two friends King Khalifa and Brother Grim will be fighting it out in a break their will scenario between their two kill teams. Uh, pretty much the goal is for them to see who is the last kill team standing in an er straight up urban warfare in the combat zone. So with that being said ladies and gentlemen, we're going to play some background music real quick. You can see exactly what each of the kill teams are packing. If you want to see exactly what the miniatures look like, go ahead and pause and take a look at your own leisure. So with that being said ladies and gentlemen, let's get this battle report on a roll. Alright, so let's go ahead and talk about the scenario rules real quick. The scenario that my friends are playing is a scenario called Break Their Will. Pretty much what ends up happening is that both of my friends will have to elect to see which one is an attacker and which one is a defender. In this scenario, my buddy King Khalifa elected to be the attacker, while my other friend Brother Grim decided to be the defender. Pretty much the idea is that you end up fighting inside the center of a battlefield, and the victory conditions is that at the end of the game, the defender rolls a d6 for each of their models with one or more flesh wounds on the battlefield. On a roll of 1 to 3, the model recovers. On a roll of 4 to 6, the model goes out of action. The attacker then scores one victory point for each enemy model that is out of action, and the defender secures one victory point for each of their models that is not out of action. Needless to say, the minute the guys with the most victory points ends up winning. For the resources on this one, whoever wins this, uh, if the attacker manages to defeat the uh, defender, the defender loses two points of morale. However, the defender wins the mission, the attacker loses one point of morale. Which is also kind of important because my buddy King Khalifa has a really low morale score uh, for his army on this one. So with the scenario rules over with, we go directly to deployment. Alright, so here's an overview of the battlefield. As you can see, this is the battle plan. Both of my friends, King Khalifa, as well as Brother Grim, have kind of elected to go for a kind of like a straight line kind of formation, taking up battle lines on either side of the deployment area, staring each other down. Which also kind of makes sense too, because my buddy King Khalifa is running an all Reavers uh, Space Wolf kill team and space wolves are very fighty and very close combat oriented and plus they are reavers so they're meant for assaulting and my friend brother grim of course is playing orcs so you know those guys always want to take it to your face as you can see they have kill teams uh, spread out throughout the entirety of the deployment area they have some forces on their flanks as well as their center which makes sense because both these teams are going to smash into each other and try to fight it out so with the uh, battle plan over let's go directly to the deployment area Alright, so starting on the deployment for the orcs, on the left hand side you can see that Brother Grim has deployed all four, uh, all five of his burner boys. I forgot the name of these characters, they're an actual, like, and the, they're actually an actual box set that is purchased uh, from Kill Team. It actually consists of a Kill Team of uh, five burner boys, uh, four of them are just armed with scorchers while the other one's a big mech, I believe is what the name of the guy is. So he decided to run with that Kill Team as part of his 100 points for his uh, roster. So you can see here he has his demolition uh, specialists as well as his combat specialists, his Zealot, as well as I believe it's a communication specialist, I think. Oh no, no, sorry, it's his leader. That's right, you only have four specialists in the army. So all five of those guys are located here on the left hand flank. Uh, looks like what he's trying to do is to sweep left with these orcs and just very much set anything that's on fire, and of course, charge into close combat to kill anything that gets within reach. And uh, that makes the deployment on the left hand side for my buddy, Brother Grim. In the center of his deployment area, right on the top floor of the Quantum Building, is uh, my 
friends, uh, sh uh, Orc Boy Armor the Big Shooter. I believe he's one of the Wreckers is what he's basically called. He's up there in the top floor getting ready to play down some Lincoln Fire. Just a little side note, if you notice this building, this building is brand new. This was created by our resident terrain wizard, Iron Major. As you can see, he's got some awesome looking propaganda posters inside this quantum building. We'll do a showcase of this building later on when we do another hobby side video showing off the terrain that's been made by Iron Major. But once again, Iron Major, if you're watching this, you are a genius, my friend. That thing is freaking awesome looking. But anyways, that's the uh, picture of the center deployment area. And finally, making it King Khalifa's right-hand flank are two units of this kill team. Up in the front are the Runts, which are six Gretchen armed with Grot Blast Blasters. And then right behind them are three more members of the Rekkas, which are just three uh, Orc boys armed with Shootas as well. Uh, sorry, not Shootas, Sluggas and Choppas. Man, these Orc names, man, they really throw me off. But anyways, that makes up my buddy uh, Brother Grimm's right-hand flank. So with that being said, we go across the battlefield to talk about King Khalifa's deployment zone. So, starting with the left-hand flank of the uh, battlefield, my buddy King Khalifa has deployed three of his specialists. Up on the left-hand side is his combat specialist, right in the middle is his leader, and then right on the right-hand side is demolition expert as well. And also on the top of that walkway on the top there, that's his scout. So all four of his specialists are pretty much making the left-hand flank of his deployment area. And make up the center of his deployment area are the last two members of his kill team, which are just two reavers armed with uh, bolt carvings. And uh, that pretty much makes up his deployment on this one. So with deployment over with, we go directly to the top of turn number one. My friends roll off for initiative to see who will go first. All right, so this is the photo taken after turn number one, after the movement phase. As you can see, there's been a lot of dynamic movement taking place on the battlefield. Uh, my buddy King Khalifa was able to secure the initiative on this round, so he was able to move first. And the very first thing that he does, he actually uses the uh, scout's special ability for his command ability in order to rocket himself across the battlefield from that walkway into the top floor and charge directly into that uh, shooter, a big, to uh, big shooter toting. Uh, boy who's over there on the right hand side and that's exactly what he does he has a grapnel launcher so it helps him move with vertical movement really quickly so because of that that scout just kind of charges across the battlefield and engages that orc in close combat at the same time he also starts assaulting on the left hand flank moving his combat specialist his demolition specialist as well as his leader taking some cover behind those sight blockers moving on the left hand side uh, for his last two members of his kill team he just has them stay right in the middle of the gantry walkways uh, just basically taking position as well as activating them for the shooting phase so that way they they have priority and you have to shoot first. My buddy, uh, Brother Grimm, on the other hand, he starts matching up movements at the same time. On the left hand side, he moves his entire squad of burner boys with the big mech into moving positions in order to assault through. Because these guys are armed with scorches as well as a uh, custom mega blaster, these things are assault weapons, so because of that, they can fire after assaulting, which is pretty cool because uh, most of those weapons are automatically hits. So because of that, he moves to the left hand side. At the same time, the right hand side, you really can't see in this photo, but you'll see it in the close ups. He moves up his uh, Gretchen as well as his other three members of his orcs in order to play down some suppressive fire onto the two Space Wolf Reavers on the center walkway. And uh, that pretty much makes up the move phase on this one. Here's a close-up of the left-hand flank. As you can see, all four Burner Boys, as well as his big mech, take up positions in order to open fire onto the three specialists here on the left-hand side for the Space Wolves. And because these guys are using assault weapons, they can fire even after they have uh, advanced forward. So because of that, uh, these Space Wolves are kind of in trouble because these Scorches automatically hit. They do D3 hits every single time they open fire. And there's a lot of these guys there as well. So things are not looking very good for King Khalifa, uh, for my buddy uh, King Khalifa here on the left-hand side. In the center here, after a dazzling display of acrobatics, you have a picture here of, I believe that guy's called S Ivar Stormstrider, I believe is his name. That's the scout who's the member of the, uh, the Primaris uh, kill team here. He charges directly into the record arm of the big shooter, and these guys will be engaged in close combat. And once again, there's a little nice close-up of the uh, propaganda posters inside the quantum building that uh, the resident terrain maker, Iron Major, created. It's just a fantastic. This building has a lot of detail, a lot of pictures, a lot of posters, a lot of walkways, stuff like i said we'll do a complete video on the quantum building by itself but it's an amazing piece of terrain anyhow that's what the uh took place here in the center of the deployment uh, center of the battlefield Here's a close-up of the center of the battlefield where the last two members of King Khalifa's kill team are taking cover positions with their bolt carbines. And um, they're also, as you can see, they have little priority markers that represent the fact that they will shoot first in the shooting phase uh, when the time comes. And uh, that makes up the uh, close-up here in the center of the battlefield. And finally, here's a close-up of the rest of King Khalifa's uh, kill team. As you can see, we have the Gretchen up in the front taking point, uh, trying to lay down some suppressive fire onto those last two remaining Primaris Space Marines. 
and right behind them are the three remaining members of the Rekkas, trying to bring in some covering fire for those Gretchen as well, and trying to put as much suppre uh, suppression as well as trying to cause a lot of pressure on the right hand side for my buddy King Khalifa. So with the move phase over with, we go directly to the shooting phase, and as you can see in this photo, the very first casualty takes place for King Khalifa's Space Wolves. The first thing that ends up happening is that Brother Grimm takes aim with his big mech with his custom Mega Blaster, opens up and cuts down the team leader, Ulfric, uh, Ulfric the leader, I forgot the guy's last name, I believe his leader, first name is Ulfric. So that guy gets cut down with a major blast from that Mega Blaster. Not only did he manage to hit and as well as wound uh, the, uh, the leader of the rival kill team, Ulfric does go down and when he rolls up for his injury, he rolls out of action so because of that the leader not only does he get hit he goes out of action right off the bat and King Khalifa is now leaderless in this battle report so things are not looking very good for King Khalifa the rest of the scorcher shots though for the rest of the scorcher boys was unable to wound uh, either the uh, combat specialist or the demolition specialist so my buddy King Khalifa got pretty lucky on that part in response, the only thing my buddy King Khalifa could do was manage to take out one of the runts from uh, that Gretchen mob in the front. Both of his carbine-wielding uh, Primaris opened up with their cold carbines, but unfortunately one of them managed to hit as well as a wound that grot, putting it directly out of action. So that makes it the shooting phase here in the center of the battlefield. So with the shooting phase over with, we go directly to the fight phase. And as you can imagine, the fight phase was pretty much one-sided for the Space Wolf. Uh, the scout here, Ivar Stormstra, had no problem just putting the hurting on the big shooter wielding uh, orc boy from the Rekkas. So because of that, that guy automatically goes out of action as well. And that pretty much makes up the uh, fight phase for turn number one. In the morale phase for turn number one, everyone passed their nerve test, so nobody ended up being break broken or shaken. So because of that, we go directly to the top of turn number two, and my friends roll off for initiative to see who goes first. So that takes the top of turn number two after the move phase. As you can see in this photo, both the groups managed to move all their forces around. My buddy Brother Grimm managed to win the initiative on this part, so he got to move first. And as you can see, the first thing he does, he just starts mobbing up on the two specialists from the get of Fenris on the left-hand side. He sends uh, three of his Scorcher boys into the combat specialist left-hand side, and on the right-hand side, he sends his leader as well as his zealot against the demolitions expert. If I remember correctly, too, uh, for Brother uh, Brother Grimm, he also sends his combat specialist against the uh, other combat specialists on the left-hand side. So that part is pretty dynamic as well. For the most part, however, the rest of the move phase was pretty lackluster. My buddy King Khalifa keeps on maintaining position of his three Primaris Reavers on the upper levels of both the Quantum Building as well as the Catwalk. And my buddy Brother Grimm moves up his Gretchen as well as his Orc Boys on the ground level to give them closer range against the Primaris and hopefully take some pot shots with them with their Blastas and Shootas. And uh, that pretty much makes up turn number two for the move phase on this one. Here's a close-up of the left-hand flank showing orcs what they do best, which is mopping up on fools and smashing into pieces. As you can see, you got three burner boys against the combat specialists. Uh, my friend King Khalifa's uh, my fr King friend King Khalifa's combat specialist on the left-hand flank there, as well as my buddy Brother Grimm. So there's two combat specialists fighting against each other. And on the right-hand side, he's got his Zealot as well as his leader going up against the Demolitions Experts. So because of that, we kind of just see exactly what happens in the combat phase uh, between these guys. And that makes a movement here on the left-hand flank. Here's a close-up of Ivar Stormstrider, the scout, getting into position to lay down some suppressive fire with his bolt pistol. And once again, it's a close-up of those beautiful propaganda posters that Iron Major made for the Quantum Building. Like I said before, this is an amazing piece of terrain, and we will do a special hobby side video just for this one in the future. And here's a close-up of his other two uh, Primaris uh, Reavers armed with their bolt carvings, just kind of located where they're at in the top, laying down some suppressive fire onto the uh, Grotz as well as the boys charging across the battlefield, trying to get to them. And here's a close up of the Grotz as well as the boys taking cover behind that sight blocker right there in the middle of the battlefield so that way they don't get shot out and basically have a little bit more of an advantage to try to survive against those shots from those bolt carbines because, you know, the primaries are not exactly meant for uh, shooting in this case because the Reavers are meant for uh, close assault. So every advantage these guys can get to take some cover is just a bonus for them. And that pretty much makes it the move phase on this one. So with the move phase over with, we skip the psychic phase because neither side has psychics and we go directly to the shooting phase. And as you see from this photo, the shooting phase was pretty much lackluster. None of Brother Grimm's orcs managed to land a single shot against either of the Primaris, and the Primaris will only managed to kill one of the Grots and return fire. I believe it was one of the uh, uh, Primaris armed with the Bolt Carbine that managed to finally hit that Grot and put him out of action. So chalk up another one for King Khalifa, but for the most part, shooting was pretty lackluster. So with the shooting phase over with, we go directly to the fight phase. 
And as you can see in this photo during the fight phase, it just ended up being an absolute slaughter for uh, King Khalifa's space wolves. Those two specialists just got chopped down to pieces. Oddly enough, it was my friend brother Grim, his combat specialist managed to take out uh, my, bro my friend King Khalifa's other combat specialist, so that was kind of rough. At the same time, my friend brother Grim Zella also managed to take out King Khalifa's demolitions expert as well. So because of that, these guys do net themselves some experience points for using their skills, as well as taking out rival opponents as well. So that part was absolutely brutal to see that in the fight phase. So with the fight phase over with, we go directly to the top of the uh, morale phase. And as at this point, the battle for my fort, my friend King Khalifa decides to surrender because he's lost so many of his own space wolves. He doesn't really want to risk losing any more guys as well. And pretty much he doesn't see himself managing to take the win on that part. So because of that, he does surrender. And because of that, the orcs managed to pull off the victory on this second battle report. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go directly to the after action report and talk about the aftermath for both of these kill teams. All right, ladies and gentlemen, now it's time for the After Action Report. This is the After Action Report for the Kill Team Chronicles Battle Report number two. It was a breakthrough will scenario fought between my two friends, King Khalifa and Brother Grimm. This battle report ended up being a defeat for King Khalifa and a victory for Brother Grimm. So let's go ahead and talk about the aftermath for both kill teams and talk about exactly what happened to them. So for the get of Fenris, for when it comes to my friend's resources, uh, King Khalifa had eight in intelligence, eight in material, four in morale, as well as four in territory. But unfortunately, since he lost this battle report and he was the attacker he does lose one point of morale dropping his morale down to three points which is pretty dangerous because that is the obvious weakness uh, for the get a Fenris in this uh, campaign that we have for his injuries Ulfric Battleborn his leader uh, went out of action he made a full recovery Ragnar the Red which is my friend's combat specialist also made a full recovery and Torvald Wormslayer my friend's demolitions expert he also made a full recovery as well so he got pretty lucky on that part for his experience his scout Ivar Stormshredder got plus one experience point for using his skill and that pretty much wraps it up for uh, the Get of Fenris. For my friend Brother Grim for the Wapocalypse now, his resources are following. He has a 9 in intelligence, 8 in material, 9 in morale, and 6 in territory. So he's doing very well for himself. Because he was a defender, he doesn't really get any bonuses for this one. Uh, he only just basically causes negative uh, multipliers from his from my friend King Khalifa. So because of that, he's sitting pretty with his stats. For his injuries, both the Gretchen from the run survived to fight another day. Same thing with the big shooter Rekka. He also survives to fight another day as well. When it comes to experience, my friend's uh, two characters, Scarzot Iron Boot, his combat uh, specialist, gets plus two experience points for using his skill as well as putting another specialist into out of action. And Zogger Stomp Kumpa, which is based his uh, Zealot, he also gains two experience points as well for uh, both activating his skill as well as putting his rival out of action as well. And that pretty much wraps up battle report number two on this one. As always, you guys, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Google+, Plus, as well as blogger.com for all the latest and greatest for our hobby news. That's good to do it for this one, you guys. This wraps up battle report number two for the Kill Team Chronicles. We will catch you guys on the flip side. You guys stay classy. Peace out.